Welcome to Your Money with Leo DiPrilli. I'm Leo DiPrilli, and each week on AM570, Dan Rivers and I will talk about anything and everything to do with your money. If you ever have questions, please feel free to call me at 330-533-6936, or you can email me at leo at gemyoung.com. Enjoy the show. This episode of Your Money with Leo DiPrilli is sponsored by Grange Insurance. Hi, our next segment is all about cabbage, money, whatever you want to call it. And um, Leo DiPrilli, he runs a family business that does business with individuals and families that need comprehensive risk management for their wealth and assets. And their thought is they believe the clients want professional advice at a fair value. And they deliver that by leveraging their reputation of professionalism, integrity, teamwork, and to get it done right first. That's what they try to do. We believe in making a difference in our clients' lives. You will find them at Stars Center Drive in Canfield, and we'll give you their information on how you can reach them. But uh, let's say hi to Leo here this morning and see how Mr. Leo has been. How are you doing, sir? Good, Dan. Good morning to you. Beautiful day out there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking about that question, how you doing? What if you would have said, you know, Dan, I, I'm down and out. I can't really, uh, I, can't, I, I can't see my way clear to do this show. But uh, that's not Leo, right? Leo says, I am ready to go. Nope. That's right. Started out early today getting ready for the show. I love my Tuesday mornings. Well, I'm glad to have you along. I, we're going to talk a little bit about um, retirement, and uh, folks, I'll relate a little bit this and get uh, Leo's reaction here. And we have a story today about uh, a chief strategy offer for a major healthcare company, and she retires and she becomes a yoga instructor. She becomes a vegan chef, and she says, "Frankly, I was bored. I felt like I was stuck." I was looking to get back into the flow of trying all kinds of things. I took random classes, but that didn't shift my life. Do you hear stories like this a lot, Vidalio? Well, Dan, the, the, the genesis of this story today, I was having coffee Saturday morning with a, an old high school friend of mine, mm-hmm. and we were commiserating about some of our current friends. And uh, they're in their later 50s, and, and it's a particularly interesting story where both of them are getting tired of their careers, uh, just because not that they're good at their careers, but they've just been doing it for so long, they're looking for a change. But both feel a little stuck because they've never really prepared for the next career. And, they've, and, and quite frankly, none of us ever think about that next career. So it got me thinking that instead of the retirement conversation being something we traditionally have once people get into their 60s, maybe we st- should start having conversations a little earlier in life and start talking about the tools people will need to take that next step in their life. That way they have maybe four or five years to teach themselves these a new profession or what's called in in this article like your next generation or or career number three. You've heard me talk in the past about disengaging from your current profession and not using the word retirement, and that just stems from retirement typically means the definition to most people is I'm just done working altogether, but the reality is most people – still want to contribute, they want to have a quality of life, and, and what I'm finding and what really got me thinking this Saturday was, well, maybe we need to start having conversations with our clients in the 50s about how do we give you the tools to move to that next stage of your life uh, when you're ready to do that. You know, most people can't relate to this because most people are thinking, if I had the opportunity to be home today, I certainly wouldn't be doing what I was doing. But I know some stories out there where people have changed um, careers, basically. Uh, one story I heard recently, a person became a truck driver late in life. And isn't that amazing because there's probably plenty of truck drivers out there saying, I'm done with that. <laughs> but uh, to someone else, that's kind of fun, right? You're uh, you're listening to, the, listen to the Dan Rivers Show or you're listening to music or whatever you're doing and you're being paid to do it. Uh, People are meant to work. I think we've come up with that idea. But uh, you're trying, I think what you try to do is give them that option, right? I'm actually going to start, as a company, start taking this a little deeper. And I'm going to start uh, doing some research on additional adult education classes, strategies, because I think the, even the college landscape's beginning to change. One of the reasons this article was interesting, is there's several universities around the country that are beginning to put in what they're calling adult education classes where 
it's almost a continuum of your college education for those that went to college where there's certain classes you can take and it's not a pass fail scenario like you would traditionally in college. You don't have that pressure of having to get straight A's in a class, but it's more about beginning to educate you in other areas that will interest you so that if you want to take on another career later in life, now you have more of the tools to do it. So I'm actually thinking this might be something worthwhile to start having conversations with clients in their 50s instead of waiting till they're in their 60s and giving them the time and then showing them where the resources might be for them to begin to prepare for that next stage. Yeah, have you thought about the, the Canfield uh, Training Center out there for students, the adult education? Is that a good place for people to start? Are you going to have a, a relationship yeah. with them? I, I don't yet, but I'm going to start building one. Like I said, all of this just started popping into my head this Saturday. Mm-hmm. That thinking we need to start moving the discussion of that next career down to people in their 50s instead of waiting till we have this conversation in their 60s. Because here's the other part of the equation, Dan. There's two parts that, that are intriguing to me. Many people, uh, like we've talked about many times in the past, just want to continue to work, but they're, they've just had enough of this career. So that's one component to it. The other part of the component is a lot of people just um, aren't financially prepared to retire in their early 60s uh, because especially like we've talked about in the past, the longevity issue is becoming a bigger issue because people continue to live longer and, and the cost of health care is, is not been abating for folks through the retirement years as of yet. So a lot of these people will still need to work. So to me, I'm starting to approach this by saying, Maybe we should start having more of this quality of life decision. And if we can put you in a position and get you thinking in terms of a, a, a next step career, then maybe you don't make what you're making today, but you're making enough to have more of a quality of life than maybe what you thought you would have had. And maybe that extends the amount of years you're able to work because you're now enjoying it again. And then that helps make the rest of your financial plan work for the long term yeah how about this Uh, let's say that you're an accountant and then you decide that you're going to go on and you're going to be a computer programmer those things would probably jive but if you're an accountant and you're going to go on to something completely different uh maybe it would be uh landscaping or it could be you know all these people have a lot of resources and they have a chance to build these other companies and i think people really want to be productive i got a couple of anecdotes from that story and uh, the one that i'm uh, referencing now this um hotel guy uh, chip conley 60 years of age um he found the modern elder academy in baja mexico dedicated to midlife learning right for decades he says we've learned the value of lifelong learning but what's important is how a person learns at 30 years old is different than when you're at 60, kind of what you were referencing, right? You can go in there and you can really soak in these topics. Right, right, and, and, and that, that's what I think is key to, 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 because it is a, to your point, it is a lifelong learning event, but we do learn differently. So plugging in the way a, a 30-year-old learns and the way a, a 60-year-old learns is, is going to be fundamentally different. And what the other trigger to this, Dan, and what, the conversation I had Saturday one of the individuals wants to start their own business but has no idea how to start a business. Um, so maybe that would be someone where you talk to the university and saying, is there entrepreneur classes or even MCCTC, which you referenced, mm-hmm. at Canfield, to help folks just begin the process of what it takes to be in your own business and get these people thinking. And I think when you do something like that, it also makes your current job more palatable because you're now striving and educating yourself to what that next career is going to be. Excellent, excellent. All right, um, we're going to talk a little bit. Maybe you can include this in your FIT meeting, Leo, because uh, Leo, um, I've sat down for his FIT meeting, and what they do is they um, usually have you and your spouse there and uh, try to figure out what you want to do as you go on in the next chapter of your life. And uh, Leo will be very honest with you and say, you know, I may be right for you, I may not be right for you. Uh, Leo tends to do things in buckets. Yep, old-time buckets. Uh, I remember when... Uh, I first started off. We used to put cash in envelopes, and we'd say, "This is going to be for this is going to be for rent." Maybe everybody did that at one time, right? Yeah, you get your cash and you'd put it in envelopes, and that's how you'd pay off things, and you'd have your mad money and all that kind of thing. But you do that with buckets. Explain that process a little bit. Well, this is more just for, for the illustrative purpose to get people to think more of a time continuum with money. Because one of the things we tend to do when we look at our money, we look at it in its totality instead of what the purposes of our money should be. So sometimes it makes it easier for my clients if I separate 
how they view their money. So, for instance, we look at retirement money. That's your long-term bucket, and I call that bucket number three. Um, and, and you have to do that because mentally you may not be needing that money for a long time. So we're going to think about that money different. We're going to manage that money different. Then we're going to have your short-term bucket, which is your, I like to call my uh-oh bucket, you know, uh-oh, the car broke down, uh-oh, the furnace broke down bucket. And that's typically a bucket we keep in cash because people need to have that safety net, knowing that if something breaks down or if they have an immediate need for cash, there's money there. So this gets into more of the behavioral finance of why people make decisions they do. Then we build out a middle bucket or bucket number two, that is, Money I'm probably saving for retirement, but I'm not completely sure yet. I might need it for something, but I'm not sure yet. So we'll manage that a little differently. That way, when we put the money into these buckets, people can then have the ability to know that their money is now purpose-driven, that the money now has a job and an explanation to it, so that when we decide on the investment allocation for that bucket, it makes a lot more sense for the individual. And that really, really comes into play and when we go through market corrections, because when people look at their bucket in totality, there is a fear that if there's a market correction, then there's an inability maybe for me to have the income in retirement that I'm hoping for. So as we separate it out, that gives people that softer landing as we go through the market corrections to know that they're going to be okay and knowing that there's money available for them to continue to live the life they're choosing to live till the market correction reverses itself. You know, it was kind of a, a different concept for me to think about because you were talking about these monies and you said, Dan, you're going to need this money here and this is going to go in bucket number one. Uh, the money that you're going to need is a short-term money. But really, this money down here, um, we can put this out here in th- two, three, and four and we can take some risks on this money because you're not going to need that for a while. And if you look at the trend of the stock market, it trend- tends to go up. And, uh, you know, when you think about it more in terms of a comprehensive way of living and thinking about your money, it makes a lot of sense. And uh, Leo is a master at doing this. There's no hard sell. You don't have to sign on the dotted line. In fact, he's probably not going to ask you to sign anything the first time he meets you. Or um, it's just it's going to be very natural. And uh, you can find them at Star Center Drive in Canfield. And as I always say, if you forget the phone numbers, just search Jim Young. Leo is always there. 330-533-6936. And, uh, Leo, your email? You can email me at leo at jemyoung.com. And, Dan, I want to add one thing to that, if I may. Not only that, after the FIT meeting, we actually prefer that nobody make decisions. We want everybody to go home and think about it for a couple of days uh, So because we don't want that pressure. We want people, <clears throat> if they decide to work with us or we decide to work with them, we want them to have time to digest it, re-engage, and have a conversation to ensure that. So no. there's absolutely no pressure. All right. Probably be a good time to, to review the word fiduciary, and that's what you do, right? That's what we are. That's right. That's why we're a fee-based financial planning firm. Uh, it's very important to us. You know, by law, we are bound to put the interests of our clients first. Uh, we get audited to that standard, uh, which I'm happy to say we've always had very clean audits. <clears throat> we, we pride ourselves on that, and that's important to us because – You have to know that the person working for you um, is taking your best interest at heart all the time. Yep, and it will all be disclosed in a document that you'll get. You'll see what they charge, and uh, you'll say, okay, that makes sense. You've got to make some money, too, because there's really no free services out there. It's usually buried, and what they'll do is give it up to you, give it very, very nice, and put it out there. Um, Well, Leo, listen, I think I'll um, wrap it up at this point here. Are you riding the motorcycle at all? Uh, I got on it once. It's been a little cold, but uh, this year I'm, I'm, I'm kind of being a little more tentative, quite frankly, Dan, just because because of all the ice we had in April. There's a lot more gravel on the ground this year than there typically is. So it's not just you worry about sliding on gravel, but when you have that much gravel, your bike's kicking up that gravel and you're really chipping up these nice motorcycles. So I'm just trying to be a little more patient before I get on it. But I did get new golf clubs, and I can tell you I sliced these new golf clubs just as well as my old ones. You know where we'll have to go? We'll have to go out to uh, one of our new clients at Waypoint and uh, try the simulator out. Uh, it's going to be nice weather for doing that. So maybe you and I can get together at the simulator and uh, we can have a an adult beverage and hit some uh, hit some golf balls. I would love that, Dan. All right. I'll see you next Tuesday.
Sounds great, Dan. Have a great week. Thank you very much. And that is Leo DiPrilli from Jim Young Wealth Advisors. And if you'd like to call him, the number is 330-533-6936. And um, I'll just tell you this, he's a nice guy. You're going you're going to enjoy working with Leo DiPrilli. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell for notifications. And also make sure to connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. For all of your business news, visit businessjournaldaily.com. For all of your arts and entertainment news, go to afterhoursyoungstown.com.